You are listening to the Garlic Fries and Baseball Guys podcast. Sam Lubman and Joe Shasky coming at you every week with all the best Giants content out there. Make sure you're liking, reviewing, subscribing, rating, sharing, all those things. Because, again, if you want Giants baseball, this is where you would like to be. So got some uh, – Got some stuff going on on the farm, Shasky, for the Giants. And uh, it's been a very exciting year for the farm system after how miserable last year it was on the farm. Uh, and the two guys making the big headlines right now are Luis Matos and Kyle Harrison. Luis Matos is banging on the door yeah. of the Giants right now, just desperate to get, uh, desperate to be put on this team. In 22 games, he has been absolutely tearing it up. Uh, on the minor league circuit. I have the numbers around here somewhere. I have too many papers in front of me, so I won't really get into it. But he's hitting, I think, like 390 in 23 games with AAA since getting called up. Um, brought this up with Gabe Kapler uh, before Saturday's game, just kind of a, what they want to see from Luis Matos, and here's what he had to say. A little bit more sample. It was off to a great start, obviously. Did really good work in Richmond. We asked him to make some adjustments in, in spring training. One of those adjustments was just being a little bit more disciplined or stubborn, as we've been saying, in the strike zone and making sure that the pitches that he's swinging at, because he has such good bat-to-ball skills, are pitches that he can drive, hit hard. And I think we're at a place now where we're starting to see that more consistently over a longer period of time. and. We like to see guys get pretty significant upper level experience whenever possible. At this point, as you know, our, our major league roster is pretty good on the on the outfield front between Austin Slater, Jock Peterson to some degree, obviously Yaz and Mike Conforto, Mitch Hanniger. There's people that we're going to be running out there on a, on a daily basis in the outfield. Luis is an outfielder. And, you know, at some point, if that need should arise, we'll I think he'll be a consideration. So, again, he's going to be considered for the lineup. My guess is the next time an outfielder goes down to injury, you're going to be seeing Luis Matos. But when you hear that, Shasky, kind of the Giants want to see more of a sample size. Where does that kind of leave you in terms of just kind of what the Giants are doing with Luis Matos right now? Uh, I mean, it's hard to be outraged because it feels like they're trying to compete for a spot, and I understand that. They got to figure out this outfield thing. I mean, like whether it means eating some of the sunken cost on Mitch Hanniger to try to staple and, and get him on out of here, uh, whether it means – you know, creating room by finding a trade partner and eating some of the contract for Jock Peterson, who's basically your platoon DH at this mm -hmm. point. Um, you got to find a spot for this guy, you know, just to, the way I'm looking at it. And Conforto's on a one-year deal, essentially. I know he can opt in. He's been good enough to where I think someone's biting on a multi-year deal. So I think between Conforto and Hanniger, one of those two has to go to free up spots for this guy. And I also would throw in there Austin Slater because I think Austin Slater has value. I do. Um, as a niche player in a pinch hit role against lefties, I understand he brings value to certain teams. It's all about the everyday development of the youngsters at yeah. this point. And so I want to see what Matos has. The last thing you want to do is a guy feeling really good and seeing the ball really, really well, waits too long down in AAA, and then that back gets a little cold and gets called up when he's maybe not seeing it as well. And then he struggles out the gate at the big league level. Yeah, what I kind of think about is just what they what they want in terms of a sample size. Um, you know, they always say, you know, we want to see a large sample size. We want to see them doing consistently. I don't know what a large sample size is for this organization, what they consider a large sample size. 22 games seems like it's a pretty sizable sample size. My guess is, I mean, obviously the, the Giants, their big thing is they want to make sure that hitters and pitchers have a good feel of the strike zone. So they want to make sure the strikeout yeah. rate is at a manageable level or a non-concerning level and while the walk rate's going up. Casey Schmidt's kind of an outlier there and where there's kind of letting him kind of sink or swim, even though the walk rate isn't maybe quite what they would want it to be. So I guess I don't know how long they want to see for, for Matos to really get a feel of that strike zone. But again, I my, when, a guy is, when a guys are kind of hot like that, they got off that hot start, I feel like you kind of want to see them cool down a little bit and see how do they handle that. Like, look at Casey Schmidt, got off to a torrid start, and now you're starting to see him cool down. Well, all right, let's see how you handle it. This is how this is your growth right here. If you can handle it and you can kind of bounce back and keep the back going, don't let it affect your defense, you're going to stick around. Uh, right now, that's where Casey Schmidt is. And so far, I think he's kind of holding up. It was kind of a rough weekend for him defensively. My guess is that's what they want to see, something similar from Matos. Let him struggle a little bit. Let him bounce back. That's your growth. All right, now you're ready for the big leagues. Uh, also, who was discussed uh, over the weekend, was uh, Kyle Harrison. As we know, the Giants need some starting pitching help, and this is kind of what they're looking for uh, Kyle Harrison right now before they call him up. Kyle obviously had a great game yesterday, threw a, a ton of strikes, struck struck people out, pitched a little deeper into the game. I think for Kyle to be a major league option, he needs to continue to have more outings like that, obviously. 
be slightly more efficient. Um, so obviously we, were, we would want him pitching into the to the sixth and seventh inning of games for us, and we think he's very capable of that. Efficiency is a major key for Kyle right now. Obviously, yeah, efficiency. You don't want to be burning your arm out too much, and that's going to be interesting for Harrison because we know when he does come up, he's gonna he's gonna get some serious kid glove treatment when he does eventually make this big league roster. I'm excited to see him. I mean, I really am. I mean, Dave needed a starter so bad. He's He's got a little bit of Johnny Sanchez and a little bit of Carlos Rodon because of the big leg movement. I, I'm really interested to see him. Um, plus fastball, great breaking stuff, and he seems to have a real aura about himself as he attacks hitters. Yeah. No, again, it's, it will be a huge boost to be able to finally get him into this rotation. Again, it's just like with everyone, when you see the the progression of these guys arriving, it makes you feel better about the the, the – roster going forward as a whole yeah. so Jesse, before we kind of move on to our next subject i got just a question for you if you had to choose between watching this team maybe focus on wins to make a playoff run or just maybe dialing back the the playoff push intensity and just be like you know what let's get some kids in here and let them sink it's or swim i'm gonna yeah. cut you off it's all about development this is all about <laughs> next year or the year after like if anything i think they need to shed a little salary so that they can acquire someone like a marcus stroman they can acquire someone like a shane bieber uh who would be available for them next year as well like that's what they need to do yeah and i think that that's a very good point there especially when they want to try and make moves at the deadline because yeah i think if you are going to make trades this year don't make trades to help you only this year. Yes. Make sure they're going to help you for next year and beyond. You know, I, I point at the Freddie Sanchez trade as being a perfect kind of uh, a, a model for the Giants to follow. Freddie Sanchez, that trade wasn't really talked about a lot at the time. No. It, was a, it was a good trade, but it was it would help them a little bit in 2009. But where that value really paid off was the next year in 2010. Mm. And that's what I think I want to go to now with Stroman. Yeah, they are going to have to make some you know financial adjustments here. Uh, Andrew Bagley wrote a really good uh, article in The Athletic about it. Basically, the way it works is, you know, the the competitive balance tax is based off the aggregate, uh, not the average, the, uh, the averages of all the salaries. The Giants basically have 11 million to play with there. Marcus Stroman would be 21 million. So that would put them over the competitive balance tax, which the Giants aren't trying to do right now. So there is going to be some finagling they're going to have to do there. But yeah, I do think, yeah, the name of the game this year, 